So we did get our slice of the state here and output it with the CTR prop. Now I also want to be able to dispatch actions. And for that, we need to find out how we can also dispatch actions from within our components. Now, when we just used Redux standalone, we simply called dispatch on the store. Now, we don't have access to the store in our container, at least not directly. We got access through connect though. And just as we were able to pass some information about which kind of state or which slice of the state we want to get, we can also pass a second configuration. I'll name it map dispatch to props. Because here I'll say, which kind of actions do I want to dispatch in this container? This also stores a function, which will receive the dispatch function, which we can execute as an argument. Just as we have dispatch available on the store here, if we directly access the store, the React Redux package gives us, well, basically this helper function, which will call dispatch on the store behind the scenes. We then here also return a JavaScript object where we can define some prop names, which will hold a reference to a function, which should eventually get executed to dispatch an action. Now you can choose any property name you want here. I'll name it on increment counter. But again, the name is up to you. This property now holds a value, of course, and that value should be an anonymous function. So here I'll use a ES6 arrow function like this, and I'll use the very short version where if it's written in one line, the part on the right side of the arrow is automatically returned. So here I want to return a call to dispatch, and this is the core what I want to do here. This function here will in the end be available through this property. And therefore, whenever this property is executed as a function, for example, if we assign it to an on-click handler, then this dispatch method here is going to get executed. And to this method, I can now pass a JavaScript object where we need to set up the type as you learned. And I'll set the type to increment here. With that, we got a property we can now also use in our container. Well, at least we can do so when we pass it as a second argument to connect. And by the way, if you ever have a case where you don't have any actions in your container, you just leave it out as we did before. Or if you have a container which only needs to dispatch actions but doesn't need a slice of the state, you simply pass null as the first argument to connect, just as a side note. So back to our setup though. Now I'm passing map dispatch to props to the connect method too. And with that, I get access to the on increment counter method here. So let's use that property. I'll copy the name on increment counter. And I want to use it here in my counter control where I have the increment button. Here I right now on the clicked prop, which is just a prop, I passed the reference what I want to execute on click down to counter control. So I can pass a function which should be executed on a click to this prop. Here I now want to pass no longer this anonymous function, but this on increment counter without executing it. So without parentheses, just like this. This will then refer to this prop, which holds a reference to this anonymous function, which will then be executed, which will then dispatch this action. With that, we're dispatching an action. Now let's also see how this changes the counter by going back to the reducer and of course adjusting it to handle this action. So here I'll add a if statement to check the action type like that. And I'll see if the action type is equal to and now I need to take the same identifier as specified here, because that is of course the identifier identifying this exact action. So one typo and it won't work. So I'll copy the increment text and I'll check for the action type being equal to that. Inside of here, I then want to return my updated state immutably by creating a new JavaScript object. And I don't even need to copy my old state here first, though we could do that for now. I'll simply return a new object with the counter property because that's the equivalent to copying everything because we only have the counter property in our old state anyways. So here I'll return counter and set this equal to state counter plus one like that. So with that, the reducer is set up. 
if you go back to the counter container, make sure on increment counter here should dispatch this action. Now, if we have a look, oh, here's here's a mistake, by the way. Clicked, where we refer to on increment counter. This, of course, is not a class method, as it would have to be if we call it like this. It's passed via props. So this props on increment counter is correct. Because it's just a property we receive, a property holding a reference to this function. Now, with these changes in place, if we save everything, save all files and go back to the application, we'll see that none of these buttons does anything, but the increment button does. It increments the counter, but now managed through Redux. This is awesome. Now, let's practice this a bit.